goodbye, last. <laughs> last goodbye. Look, here, one of your relatives sent in a post from Sweden. Thank you, Nicholas. You rock, Nicholas. Thanks. That's all this is. Pages and pages. Thanks, Nicholas. Nicholas, you rock. So cool. They're all from Sweden. Author Skriben from Sweden. Post. Well, so what's you gonna do there? What? That's it. Get online and. Copenhagen, Denmark. Avoid the snow. Hero of the day. Holmes. Oh. So <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas. Nicholas, thanks. This is great. Yeah. Heroes of the day. Okay, so you guys are, uh, came up to the... We're heroes of the day. Now we're... Huh? Now we're really scratching for it, so you guys are. Check it out. Lots of people care about us, man. That's awesome. James got more than me. Well, I sent more in. <laughs> this is a book. Love. Yeah. How many did you get? You rock, James. Love, James. Huh? Okay, let's start from over here. Okay. Uh, let's start with not such a serious one. Um, I've, uh, this is from Clive Burr the second author. Uh, James, it, it would take many, many pages of rambling and babbling to try express my love, respect, and appreciation for your existence, so I'll spare you all the fuss. Very nice. I've read oh, all about you sometimes. <laughs> love, James. Sometimes slow... S I've read about how you sometimes slow songs down live a bit to put a little more hump into them. Sad but true, for example. Have you guys ever considered purposely playing certain songs a little too fast? <laughs> like an old-fashioned 85-esque, slightly too fast Four Horsemen or something. Have we ever played something too fast? I don't think there is such a thing as too fast. As a... Not with Slayer around. Maybe uh, we were at a time when we were in a hurry every time, to, to I mean, get I'd somewhere. Say, the only time is um, it's every time we rehearse Dyer's Eve. It's so fast that it doesn't sound good, which it, is why we don't play. Even, that's why we register. don't play. It's so fast it doesn't register yeah. uh, and the time, uh, you know, the concept of time. Yeah. Yeah. It goes it, by it, so it, fast. It exists outside the space-time continuum. <laughs> but yes, I feel hey, are you in the band? What that the you we definitely band? do <laughs> slow <laughs> songs <laughs> down, like Sabbath True yeah, or uh, yeah, Seek oh, and Destroy, oh, uh, 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 <laughs> even tune them down. Which gives him a little more as this guy puts hump or like er. I don't know how you spell that, but but there are certainly times where certain songs are faster. I don't know so much if they're on purpose or not, but that is what certain people are feeling. At That's what certain people are feeling at the moment. Okay, your turn now. La, hey, how's it going? Okay. Um, Okay, let me pick a nice short one. We okay. Uh, Alright, this is. You should answer I've seen a picture so of you guys picking each other. <laughs> okay, this is, from, uh, this is from Racco16 from La Paz, Baja, California, Sur, Mexico. Okay. Hey, Kirk, you're so fucking cool. I love your souls. We love you. Okay, here are my questions. Do you like the superhero movies that have been getting released? Spider Man, Daredevil, X Men? If so, what's your favorite? No. Do you like the American version of The Ring? No. Uh, what's your favorite superhero? Hmm. The Spectre. What's your favorite St. Anger song? And which one do you think was the more challenging? Hmm. My favorite St. Anger song? That's a hard one, because they're all pretty much my favorite right now. And the most challenging was the one we had the most problems playing. Um, will you say Revolver, my band, is one of your favorite bands? Yes. Okay. You're next, man. Okay, uh, here we go. This is, the author is, uh, Star Wars 83. <laughs> okay. George Lucas said it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Location. Coruscant in a galaxy far away. This guy is crazy. Hey there, Rob. 
How long did you have to train to become the Shaolin base master kung fu motherfucker of the West Side G? <laughs> it actually says that. It says it? that, man. Right on. <laughs> many, many years, my child. Um, it started. I started out with uh, actually flies, like catching flies with my fingertips. Stink ass hoppers. <laughs> Blindfolded, and then uh, exactly gr chasing grasshoppers and uh, watch many, many, many uh, Bruce Lee movies. And um, uh, took my Taekwondo and applied it. And then I got into Shotokan, and Budokan. here I am, Budokan, yeah. Um, so that's where I got it from, lots of Bruce Lee movies. And uh, Samurai Whiskey Warlord um, motherfucker would have probably been more appropriate. Thank you. <laughs> that's pretty cool. spot on, though. Yeah. Here's one from Justice is Here. Have any hot chicks complimented you on your new hairdo? Just the wife. Just the wife. Just the wife. Just the wife. She was actually the one that, um... Cut it. She was actually... In my sleep. She was the one that wanted me to cut it. Cuts my hair. Because um, I, I wanted to grow my hair for you, the fans, because that's how dedicated I am to Metallica and to what you want. And she wouldn't have it. So, I'm sorry. Had to take the wife. Um, hey, you got the shot. What? Speaking of hairdos, uh... <laughs> don't look that bad. No? Nah. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I've been trying to. Okay. Oh, I had a good one. No, it's gone. Oh. Author Big Cause 78 from LA. Uh, <laughs> stupid question, but what the flock? I've been wanting to create James Hetfield in my Madden football game. Raiders, of course. What position and number would you be? Kirk's the kicker, and Lars is the punter. <laughs> punter, what about you? Uh, what would I, what position would I be? <coughs> uh, I would be, well, gotta be lead, lead water boy. Rhythm, rhythm water boy. You'd be the quarterback, man. I would be the quarterback. You'd be the quarterback. I'd be the quarterback number, uh, like a half. <laughs> point five. No, point, point seven five, three quarters. I like that. Okay, is it my turn? Your turn. Okay, this I is pass. okay. <laughs> this is from Freaking Fixer, and he's from Melbourne, Australia. Okay, a couple questions. He says, for the new album, have you used any new guitar techniques that you haven't previously used before? Yes. With your guitar work on the new album, has your playing been from demo tapes, or is it totally improvised on the spot? The entire album is totally improvised on the spot, my friend. As a musician, has making this album changed you and giving you new elements in your guitar playing form? Has it expanded you and given you music new, Has it expanded you and given you new musical horizons? And I must say, this album is the most complete band statement we've ever made, and uh, I am playing for this song more than ever before. Does anyone want to expound on that? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. <laughs> yes, you kick ass. Thank you, man. So what? do you, quarterback. Love James. <laughs> Thank you. Love Kirk. <laughs> I pass. <laughs> pass the baton. To I. Okay, this one's from uh, the author is Yoda, and he's from <laughs> Canada. Dude, what's it with the like, George Lucas? I don't, I don't know what's that. going on here with with this for me. They want and you it, to be in movies already. I know, man. It, Lucas is right up the road too, huh? You, Lucas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hey Rob, once again, welcome to the family. I just can't say that enough. Um, a, no. <laughs> okay, what made you decide to audition for Matoka, and why did you accept the challenge? Well, my friend, uh, history, honor, uh, the privilege. And, um, you know, the, the, the amazing challenge of it. It's a very special moment for me, so.
Good. These guys are my brothers now, my new family, and I'm stoked to be here. And we're all sitting on one couch. That's right. <laughs> so you know we tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know we'd be tight. You passing? No, I'm not passing at all. You, I'm gonna, you. I'm gonna torture. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna torture people. Twenty-two questions from one guy. See? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Lars, you are the smartest man alive. Thank you. I love you. Love Lars. Love <laughs> you. <laughs> what an honor to be able to ask you and the rest of the guys some questions. Blah blah. Ha ha. Long live the Great Dane. Uh, pick pick a number between one and twenty-two. Somebody. Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-three. What are your favorite bands to listen to nowadays? The Dotsons, Metallica, Queens. Do you still turn on Diamond Head or Deep Purple or Old New Wa White Stripes, the new White Stripes Elephant record? It's very difficult to read this. Do you still turn on Diamond Head and Deep Purple, Old New Wap and uh, when we were, at, when we we're firing up the old um, jukebox down in the in the pinball and then down we're playing pool and stuff. There's a bunch of uh, of that caper in there. Alright, so we're trying one more. Pick another. Number Kirk. Uh, seven. Are there going to be any pictures of you guys decked out in eyeshadow? <laughs> <laughs> on the same yeah. anger booklet. Uh, none other, only Kirk. Only me. Only Kirk. And I'm going to be wearing that fuzzy uh, jacket that Lars wore on, on load, but on my head. <laughs> but nothing <Hello>. else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Armpit shadow. Uh, one more. Then we've done three of this, guys. Kirk, pick one. Uh, eleven. What are your favorite out of the studio activities? <laughs> when you're it, out of the studio. Yes, there's such a thing. I. That <laughs> was the last time we left. Sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> breathing. Getting back to the studio. Eating. <laughs> um. I think that's good, man. This is from um. From Damage, Damage X Inc. Peter L. of Baltimore, Maryland. Or Castaways. I, I don't fucking. See? There you go. It's all written in mysteriously disappearing gray ink. Uh, okay. Is that it? <laughs> well, if you try to drum every day. <laughs> I try to not draw them every day. Alright, oh, that's I think that's good right there. Alright. Author. S Stanger. Oh, it's supposed to be saying anger, but Stanger is cool. Stanger 18. Location, New Hampshire. I actually feel quite honored to ask you a question which you probably won't answer anyway. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Why do people write that? Because I will end up asking something stupid. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. Lol. I'll laugh out loud. Well, here it goes. What is one of your biggest motivations in writing music? I don't just mean all the lyrics and stuff, which I believe all the guys have worked on on this album, but when you write specific riffs, is there any sort of feeling that you just pour into the guitar? Or is it more technical than that? Thank you so much. Well, on this record, just jamming with the guys, just getting this, I don't know, this overwhelming of <laughs> that, just mm. wanting to play, I mean, you're playing your favorite guitar, plug it into some amp that just sounds so good, turning it way up, like being in your own clubhouse, you can play as loud as you want, just plugging into a new amp, just really gets me motivated when the crunch is there I just write like 10 riffs it feels really good so that's not very technical thanks I pass all right this is from ice Celt. i think that's how you pronounce it in silicon valley california and they say Hey Kirk, either you or someone else said on one of the videos that you go through different phases and right now you're in surfer dude phase. What with the reggae and 
surfing and all. Which means, I guess, that you like to taste lots of different things life has to offer and immerse yourself in your favorites until you're fully sated. Just guessing. So my question finally is, what other interests do you have that you think might turn into a new phase? Well, let me tell you, I selt. Um, whenever I get a new sort of interest, it's not really a phase. I, I tend to uh, incorporate it into my lifestyle. Every sort of quote unquote phase that I've had in the past is still with me now. It's it, it never really left. I uh, you know I still like horror movies. I'm still into yoga. I'm uh, I'm still uh, you know into mountain biking. Um, I still like to play guitar, and it, it, surfing is just another thing that I'm incorporating into my lifestyle, and it's just an, an amazing thing, man. It's just, uh, it's changed my life, really. It's uh, made me a lot clearer and a lot healthier, and I've learned a lot of discipline, and uh, a lot of there's a certain amount of mind over matter that comes with surfing. You know, it it it, it, it tests your mind and. Uh, I like that about surfing, and so I'm surfing for life. My bro right here. Yeah. Yeah. Are you passing? I'm passing. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. All right. Hey, Ra. Oh, wait. Okay, this is the author is... Are the authors up top or at the bottom? At the top. Uh, okay, here we go. Author, sure? Yeah. Author Jordan. Sure? Yeah. I thought the author was at the bottom. <laughs> well, then you better go back and... Uh, oh, that's uh, right. <laughs> Uh, oh no, they are at the top. You know what? Because the first one. Right. Oh man. Oh darn. See, 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 see. see. So you fucking Yoda Holmes was. Yeah, the Yoda Holmes. <laughs> another, another Yoda. Another Yoda. Um, hey, Ra okay, this is from Jordan. Um, actually, no, this isn't from Jordan. This is from uh, Lead Harvester. And um, he's got a number of questions here, but uh, I'll answer a couple real quick. Uh, uh, what is your personal favorite Metallica albums? Uh, I like uh, Ride the Lightning. That's um, good. And uh, I mean, I love them all. Don't get me wrong. Okay, hey Rob, welcome to the family. Do you, um, do you are what, do you are disappointed to not play the bass lines on Saint Anger? <laughs> Do you are? Do you are poison disappointed? I are. I are not disappointed. <laughs> I are not. I actually. I. I think it's amazing what Bob did as a bass player on the new Saint Anger album. It sounds heavier than shit, big and fat, and uh, his his playing actually definitely makes a statement on the new stuff. And I was nothing but impressed. And Bob really kicked ass on this record. I, of course, I look forward to to you know playing on on the the next album and stuff but no way i think bob kicked ass it's amazing and uh i've also these guys have also given me the wonderful opportunity to be a part of this wonderful dvd which uh, is raw and in your face and uh it's a great rehearsal moment for us come on <laughs> thank you i pass it's on my again it's you it's on ski i curry again too I have to apologize for reading the wrong name. Fuck the wrong name. Well, Homespun that sent in the. Uh... Oh, okay, well, Damage X, and it was dude from Baltimore. Alright, uh. Hi, Lars, this is the first question. Why don't you just read the first question? This is from. Met. M E T J K L, location Minnesota. He posts. Just so want to say the best drummer. Blah, uh, thank you. My question for you is: What are the average song lengths? Uh, I heard somewhere between seven and eight minutes. Could you confirm it? Um, they're they're a bit longer than uh, the last few records. I can tell you that. There's uh, definitely some stuff that's. Uh, up there, I mean, here, here, here's here's a good way. You know that we've confirmed that uh, there'll be 11 songs on the record, and you know that um, we've talked about the fact that there'll be north of 70 minutes of music on the record. So um, get your calculator out and 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 actually let me know what the average number is. So next time um, next time anybody asks me, I'll have the answer. 
but uh, most of it sits uh, somewhere between five and I guess nine minutes. That was from, um, how do you pronounce it? Metrical. Metrical? And Metjackal. Okay, you got one from him too? No. Was he the first guy? I'm just good at not license plate stuff. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> um, oh, here's another one from him. I was wondering what your favorite song to play on the Injustice for All album is. Considering it's your best work to date. Invisible Kid. By the way, your eating habits don't bother me. Uh, and justice for all, I like uh, Harvester. Harvester was always a good time. Um, what else? Dyer's Evil is a great reversal. Medley? One day we'll play it on live. The medley? We played it live. Huh? Yeah. We played it last Yeah, not together. <laughs> I thought we played it for... Uh, dude. Make a wish, dude! Oh, yeah, that's so right. We played he it did. live before for somebody. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think Harvest of Sorrow is, is, uh, was always a good time. Hopefully, maybe we'll put that in the next couple tours. We haven't actually played that for a while. Um, one's, one's fun. <laughs> My favorite part of one... Having a good time? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part <laughs> of one Jesus. was when you guys did the dueling, battling acts. We should bring that back for the kids. Oh yeah, that's right. When we, we used to trade off the league. Dude, yeah. that was fun. Dude, that was hella. Bring that back. That was a highlight for me. And you know Maybe what? No one else, but it was fun. It when was fun we for um, me too. When we brought back uh, Blackened uh, for the um, tour a couple summers ago, or whenever, that was also a bit of a good time because we hadn't played that for a long time. And the shortest straw I really like. I think I like them all. I like the shortest straw. Well, we never played To Live Is To Die, did we? Oh, we did. We played part of it. Uh, Eye of the Beholder. Eye of the Beholder. That one was a bit wobbly. But that was a mainstay in our set for a while. Eye of the Beholder? Yeah, yeah, even though it was a bit wobbly. That one part. Kick <laughs> um, And also sometimes uh, the title track was a, a bit of a mouthful. Uh, does that, is that enough on that question? All right, next. Step up. Hey, man. Uh, dude, loot. This is uh, from Creeping Douche. <laughs> Vancouver, it's BC, it's probably Bob. <laughs> hey, James, you are the most bad ass person. Oh, bad ass person, not bad ass. In the world. But I've noted that you noticed that you have gone through some pretty different phases in your life. This is the same phase, guy. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just a phase and Maybe they're going it, through. Yeah, phase. And you look considerably different in each of these, almost unrecognizable. <laughs> wow. yeah, cool. Does it ever shock you to see old pictures of yourself? Because it. Um, because it is amazing how different a person can look over time, or does it simply bring back fond memories? We've certainly, I've certainly got too much time in front of the mirror, I think, <laughs> with facial hair and stuff. Guys get to do that stuff. Yeah. They get to mess around with that stuff. Right. Just, I don't know, maybe just get kind of bored at looking at myself every morning. Uh, but shocked to see old pictures? No. Uh, I'm amazed how, I don't know, it's weird to me when you see someone after 20 years and they show up and it's like, you look exactly the same. Like Pusshead? Haven't you done things or what? I don't know, sometimes that's a little strange. Um, but yeah, tons of fond memories for looking back at old pictures, putting up a bunch of old stuff in here again gotten into the uh, mindset of celebrating old pictures and past stuff and I think it's cool having uh, uh, pictures around from the past kind of uh, reminding you of what great times were there and what great times are to be had so cool I'm gonna do two like Lars just so I can this is a quick one James when you write your lyrics do you have this is from Voodoo Child also in Canada um, 
When you write your lyrics, do you have to be in a certain state of mind to write them? Like in California, no. Like in the mood to write. Uh, on this album, no. It just, things just happened. It happened. We'd get talking in here and things would start, like, I guess that would be some kind of mood. We'd sit around and talk and then just start getting really deep and just start, you know, getting Cultivating fairly it. philosophical at times, sometimes overly philosophical. But then you start to, it puts more wonder and more just, I don't know, just creativity in your mind, I think. So before it used to be, no, it just happens when it wants to happen. And you can, I can put myself in that place whenever I want to also, which is pretty cool. Kirk tries to rhyme everything, so it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it's the only way what were some of your classics? Uh, yeah. Please, yeah. please don't quote it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kirk wants to make them rhyme for some reason. That's the only way they'll come out, man. I don't know But it's it funny because you're so, uh, you know, it's flow of consciousness, but then you make them rhyme. Yeah. Weird. His best lyrics come when he's not trying so hard, I think. I think Lars really tr tries to get, you know, down and maybe intellect intellectualize it too much. And sometimes when you're trying too hard to do something, it doesn't kind of flow out. And a lot of times things he just said instead of trying to write them down were a lot more uh, just natural and potent, I think. And I think it was really lightening the load on me because I was overwhelmed by load and reload. Just, you know, yeah. 30 songs, write the words, oh my God. Yeah, it was an antidote to that. Yeah, so yeah. here, start singing right now. Here's a mic. Come up with something right away. We come up with the music right away. Let's come up with the lyrics right away. But and then I'd kind of be stuck and someone else would throw something out. And then it got to that point of where everyone was kind of contributing. Yeah. And it felt good. It felt good to get some help. Yeah, I remember freaking out because, like, you know, uh, James was there scribbling some stuff on a pad of paper, and all of a sudden, Bob Brock came up to me with a pad of paper, like pushing it in my direction. I was like, I don't want that. What are you doing? Then I took it and you know, started writing, and same thing with Lars. We started getting results, and next thing you knew, we were all just, you know, kind of doing it and collaborating, you know. And it was it was great. It was all last night in the studio here. We got a, a couple of things we got to get done. And it's uh, yeah. eight oh nine so, uh, p.m. Kirk's got to do three in a row. Uh, I'll, I'll just go listen. to Kirk's doing a three in a row. Mm -hmm. And we all and we, we, we all we all have to pack. And some of us don't even own a suitcase. Right Holy now. shit! You better uh, tell someone to go get a suitcase for you, bro. All right. All right. This is by Z, and I don't know where Z comes from, but. Nothing fast to say. Actually, he's been working his fucking ass off. He worked his ass off this whole weekend mixing the last part of the DVD. So that's the past catching up with him. Ten years ago, I would have said it's something really negative and nasty. And I can't, I can't bring myself to it. Hey, you know? he he needs his beauty rest just like any anywhere. He needs yeah. He needs mm -hmm. water. So I guess fall asleep on the last day. Oh, man. should I um? Yeah, what should, so I, should I listen to these symbols or can you play them? Okay, yeah, I'll listen to these three in a row. All right, three in a row. Okay, this is from Z. And I don't know where Z's from, but here we go. Kirk, first of all, thanks for being a very crucial part of the Metallica machine. Thank you. Question one: I'd like to know more about your horses. I've owned horses for over twenty years, and I'm interested in knowing more about yours. So I have. Two horses, well, I have one, and my wife has one, Frisian, they're, they're both Frisian horses, and uh, Frisian horses are, f are from Friesland, which is from the Netherlands, and they're big black horses with long manes and long uh, fe uh, feathers, which means hair over their hoofs, 
They kind of look like black Clydesdales. But if they're Frisian, why don't you put a blanket on them? Because <laughs> it's warm where I, I'm at. Uh, and uh, one's not named Taba, and um, my horse is named Riska. And they're three and four years old. They're big and black. Uh, Riska is about 17 and a half hands tall, which is a pretty big horse. Uh, and uh, they're both great horses. Very smart, very gentle. I like to call them the, uh, the gentle giants. And they're uh, really, really great horses. Easy to ride, easy to train. Uh, Risk is a little bit mouthy, you know. Every time I, I pet him on on his on his uh, snout, he likes to to mouth at my my hand, thinking that I have a nice juicy carrot for him. So I just give him a big one. And uh, yeah, he also stepped on my foot once, and also uh, took a piss on my leg once. But you know, that's all all about you know. All part about being around horses, as you know. Did it hump your leg? It goes with the Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Thank God. Thank God for that. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. ooh, that, that ain't no red pencil. <laughs> That's that like no, a red baseball bag. That ain't no lipstick. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, question two. When are you going to show off those awesome tats on stage? Lose a shirt, blah, blah, blah. You know, I like wearing shirts on stage. They keep all the sweat. Off my guitar. <laughs> uh, He's a clean man. You know, it's just, uh, I don't like to get uh, chafed by my guitar strap. I have sens sensitive nipples. <laughs> so, um, I hope only... that answers your question. <laughs> Kirk's a clean man. He's only comfortable with using his, um, his personal um, washroom and toilet. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know it. He's got to take a crap. He ain't doing it at HQ. Yeah, man. he, and, he Till he goes home. No porta potties for me, man. No way. And no pissing in his wetsuit either. Yeah, he I don't. I won't. I won't. Pee in <laughs> piss in my wetsuit. He pissing yours, but uh, yeah, I pissed in someone else's, <laughs> not my own. That's just too gross. Because then you got to swim around and get recirculate water. And See, I don't mind. It keeps me warm. So yeah, especially well, up here in San Francisco, yeah. where it's totally freezing. All right, let me do another one. Okay. Alright, this is from, uh, uh, this is from Maniac, and Maniac is from Connecticut. Alright, so he says, Hey Kirk, you're the reason I play guitar. I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me, even if it was second-handedly. You're very welcome. My questions are, do comments such as the one above weird you out, or do they just flatter you? You know, I take them for what they're worth. Sorry, man. Hey, come on. I take it for what they're worth, you know, and I appreciate the, uh, uh, you know, I appreciate the sentiment, and they don't weird me out, but, you know, I, I also try not to hold them too close to my heart. And uh, the third thing that Maniac asks is, also, are you still into yoga, or have you put that behind you now that you're surfing, and is that, and it's not really the load era anymore? Well, let me tell you, man. Just because it's not the load era anymore doesn't mean that I still don't do things that I did back then. Uh, I, uh, I, I still I still do yoga, like I said. You still breathe? And I, st yeah, I still breathe. I still play. I, you know, I still hang out with you guys. I still play load songs, even though it's not the load era. Um, but thanks for asking. What era is it? What era is it? Yeah, what is it? It's, it's, yeah. It's, Air of St. Anger. Alright. Okay, here's another one. Alright. This is by Erwin Even Starr from the East Coast. Okay. Erwin Even Starr says, I wonder if he'll answer. Be like God answering one of my prayers. Anyways, Kurt, did you ever had it hard growing up? Like, did anyone make fun of you for being strange or unique? Not trying to insult you. Did you ever wish as a youngin that you were someone else? Well, let me tell you, man. It was hard for me growing up, but I made it through. And, uh, you know, people are still making fun of me because I'm strange and unique. And I haven't let it hold me back that much. In fact, you know, I kind of uh, bask in, in, in the thought of being strange or unique. Uh, when I... When I was young, I for a second I, I wished that you know I was 
Jimi Hendrix, but only for a second. <laughs> he was dead by that time. And, uh... Yeah, it says here, Been a fan since I was a, a whittle bitty girl, and now being 18 and still a whittle bitty girl, hell, I still love you. Thanks, Aaron. Alright. You gonna do, you do, do a few? We have to share one more. That was three. That's okay. Three. Or was um, it? Well, after I'll do one and then uh, you guys can. Uh, okay, uh, this is from uh, the author is Zero, 1984, and this is he's from Melbourne or she or whoever is from Melbourne, Australia. Hey man. Hey mate. <laughs> uh, do you have any tips for people trying to play bass? What is your favorite Metallica song to play right now? Well, okay, tips. Um, well. For one thing, definitely listen to as much musical styles as possible. I've always felt that's kind of an important thing. Um, you know, don't be afraid to listen to to jazz or, yeah, I mean, punk. You know, is important because there's a lot of attitude in it. Funk. There's also a lot of attitude. I mean, even like Motown or Soul has great bass. Um, you know, throw that in the mix with uh, with good old Sabbath and Deep Purple and. Uh, even like Rush, you know, Getty Lee's a great monstrous bass player. Uh, Met songs, well, you know, my favorite Met song to play has to be Dyer's Eve, but only ten times faster than it really is. <laughs> Period. So, so it's, it's like it's alive. You mean. It's like humming. It has to be ten times so, faster. So it's so fast, it's like a hummingbird. Well, we're like like a CD skipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> That's it. I pass. Shoot. Okay, Lars. Busy. What? What did I do? What do you need? You gonna do it though? Do you want me to? Sure. Okay. My turn. In the. Okay. Hi, Lars. Have you ever listened to the Danish band Red or Shava? If yes, what do you think of them? That's fun. That's from Guy Denmark, surprise. I haven't. Never heard of them. Uh, what's... No other questions? I'm going to miss it. It's going to be here. I'm going to be here. Are you really an elf? <laughs> Future elf. <laughs> future elf. Hey Lars, are you really an He's elf? He's the future elf. No, does Nicholas have cool editing software? That's from Jihad. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I'm just reading what it says here. Um. After you. <laughs> After your vocal work on 53rd and 3rd, do you plan on doing any more in the future? Thank you. Um, he wrote that, not me. Um, that's from Omnibus in Pennsylvania. Omnibus. Um, I, I can't answer that. I, it's not really something I've thought about. Like, do I plan on doing any more in the future if um, the right situation comes up in my uh, unique voice? will be needed for something, uh, I will be glad to step up to the plate. This is from Ultra Drummer. Is that Green Sparkle Kit your new tour kit? Yes, it is. And it's really cool. I'm really psyched about it. It really, um, it sounds good. It's fun to play. Um, we did uh, all the DVD stuff on it. And um, I'm really um, pretty psyched about it. How, is this, uh, how much? I like this guy already because he calls me Mr. Ulrich. How much fun was it recording St. Anger? Um, well, St. Anger was a lot of fun recording for a couple of different reasons. In that it was the um, basically um, on every previous record we had brought the songs into the studio, so there was a lot more. The studio was more of a place uh, to just record to execute. Um, as, as we've talked about a couple times here. Um, on this project, the this, this studio was where everything was created. You know, the, the studio and the writing, the, the recording and the writing process was the same. 
Every day we'd just show up and we'd go in there and jam. And I think that out of jamming came something that was a lot more organic and kind of pure, and it was a lot more fun because um, there was no pressure. Um, in the past, it was always the drums that had to be uh, recorded first, and so um, there was always kind of pressure on me to get my shit done so um, the other guys could go. And um, so it was a lot more fun doing it this way because um, not only did the vibe of what was created was so much better because... Um, like I said, it was more organic and pure, and um, all the ideas came up on the in the studio in there instead of people bringing them from home or me and James running off somewhere and record uh, writing by ourselves, and um, and it was just a lot um, less. Uh, there was a lot less pressure, and um, so it was definitely more fun. And um, that's it. I'm here, man. I'm not like Bob, man. Okay. I got two. I can't. I have to do two because I can't pick which one I like better. Author, bringer of death. Lovely. St. Anger's basement location. Okay. Hey, James, I just got to say that you are a true influence on my life and I respect you more than anybody. Your music has been so moving to the point where it has saved me from feeling unimportant on this earth, among other things. Wow. Cool. My question is, when you hear people say stuff like this about changing their lives and being a big influence, how does it make you feel? Well, yeah, it's, I guess I, before, especially before rehab, I'd kind of, well, after being on the road for two years, someone says that to you, you kind of, I don't know, you get numbed to it for some reason. But I don't want to feel numb to it because every person who comes up has got some story that's attached to Metallica somehow. And it blows me away that something that we've written or we, we've created has helped someone in their life. And, and what a gift that we've been given to pass on somehow through that person. Somehow that person has become a Metallica fan for a reason to get help somehow. So anyway, without getting super spiritual with it. It makes me feel great. It makes me feel connected to people. And that's, that's something that's always been tough. Uh, I've been searching for in my life. Um, there was one other one about... There's something... Oh, here it is. Author is... Oh, it's that same dude. It's a, but a different... It's Matt Jiggle... Hey, James, I just want to say how much I respect you for being able to sing and play a massive guitar at the same time. A massive guitar. It must be the double neck. A giant. Uh, I was wondering why in the Kill em All days you weren't really excited about singing right away and why you felt uncomfortable, if you could answer this. I don't know. I felt, I don't know, I was a shy kid. I didn't want to be the singer. I wanted to play guitar. Then I knew I wanted to be in a band though I wanted to I weren't so everyone needed a singer so I wanted to sing and as far as singing playing guitar together at the same time I that was another question I actually wanted to read but kind of multitasking in a way it's it's kind of like I grew up doing playing the piano like right and left hand doing different stuff rhythm here solo -y stuff here or playing drums which I, I think I can kind of do or even riding like a motorcycle or something just like stuff going on at different times, you know, and playing guitar is kind of the same thing, singing and playing, and someone wanted talking to tip on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking and signing. Eating and burping. Breathing and thinking. Um, yeah, if there's difficult parts, I just slow them way down and find out where my hand is when a certain word happens, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> I know when I say like, These are difficult oh, parts or something. Them out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We edit them together. It's all in the editing. So live, bring your uh, Pro Tools when you show up at the concert. <laughs> anyway, thanks.